Now, when it comes to intermittent fasting, again, intermittent fasting is a way to mimic the effects of calorie restriction by inducing negative calorie balance. People ask us all the time, they say, well, should I try intermittent fasting? Is it, is it good for me? Is it not good for me? You know, how do I know whether or not I'm a candidate for intermittent fasting? Now, the risks of intermittent fasting are extremely low. And I'm going to go into detail about what intermittent fasting actually is and how you can perform it in a couple minutes here. But just to get this out of the way, okay, intermittent fasting does apply to the majority of all humans. But here's who it does not apply to. Number one, young children, not smart to induce calorie restriction because they require calories in order to grow. Number two, pregnant women, not smart. Number three, breastfeeding mothers, not smart. Okay. People who should be cautious about intermittent fasting are include people with type 1 diabetes, myself, okay? We're going to show you how you can perform an intermittent fast upwards of 24 hours, but anything beyond 24 hours is definitely not safe. People who have eating disorders, if you have an eating disorder or a history of eating disorders, then I do not recommend intermittent fasting because it can be very difficult psychologically and emotionally. And if you are an athlete trying to gain muscle mass or in advance of a competition or you're trying to grow your muscle mass and change your body composition, then I strongly would not recommend intermittent fasting. And finally, people who are underweight. Okay, if you're underweight and you are trying to gain weight, then intermittent fasting is not going to lead you in the right direction. Now, if you have a medical condition, people always ask us, well, what about, what about type 2 diabetes? What about chronic kidney disease? What about fatty liver disease? Should I perform intermittent fasting? And the answer is, I'm not your doctor. I cannot tell you exactly which diseases are safe to intermittent fast with, but here's what I will tell you. Talk to your doctor about it. Ask your doctor. Most doctors are actually quite knowledgeable about intermittent fasting. And to give you a sort of generalized statement here, I would say most humans, the answer is yes. But if you have a very specific question about your particular metabolic state, then please go talk with your doctor and get help from a medical professional. Okay. Here's what I want you to not do. I don't want you to overthink this. I don't want you to scare yourself into sitting on the sidelines. I want you to just try this out and I want you to make small changes until it feels comfortable. Okay. The overwhelming majority of all people should intermittent fast because again, it induces a number of positive metabolic consequences. Okay. If you're trying to lose weight, I highly recommend inducing negative calorie balance through intermittent fasting. If you're trying to improve your insulin sensitivity, which in my professional opinion should be the majority of all humans, the answer is yes, perform intermittent fasting. Okay. This is a very valuable technique that can significantly improve your insulin sensitivity independent of exercise, independent of a low-fat plant-based whole food diet. And now we can get into detail about how you can specifically do this in your world. Okay. The question is, is this a sprint? Is this a marathon? Do I have to commit to this for the rest of my life? And the answer is, I want you to just start. That's all I want you to do. I don't want you to get too deep into what's going to happen three years from now, five years from now, and can I turn this into a permanent habit change? Don't think about that. Just think about the next couple of days. The first thing that you can do is called the once per week intermittent fast. It's a 24-hour fast that is performed only one day per week. So here's how you can do this. You just choose one day of the week where you are likely to not be quite active. Okay, So you choose a rest day if you are an active exerciser. And during that day, you basically are going to drink water for breakfast, drink water for lunch, and start and stop your fast at dinner time. So the easiest way to think about this is if you chose Wednesday as your fasting day, what I would do is go backwards to Tuesday evening. I would eat dinner. I would finish my dinner at, let's say, 7 o'clock p.m. I would stop eating dinner at 7 o'clock p.m. and I would start my stopwatch. From that moment onwards, my goal is to try and not eat food for approximately 24 hours. How am I going to do that? Well, from the time dinner is done until the time I go to bed, I'll just drink some water. When I hit the pillow, hopefully at like 9 o'clock p.m., 10 o'clock p.m., somewhere around there, I'll have two to three hours of a post-digestive state already passed. And that's a good thing because most of the material inside of my digestive system will have cleared. And as a result of that, my digestive system will not be running an active metabolic process, which will enable me to sleep better. I will then go to sleep at call at 10 o'clock PM. I'll sleep from 10 o'clock PM until six o'clock AM the next morning. When I wake up, I am already 11 hours into my fast because your sleeping window counts. So I'm pretty much halfway done. If you think about it that way, all I have to do is not eat food for breakfast and not eat food for lunch. Well, how am I going to do that? It's very simple. 
for breakfast, instead of eating food, what I would do is drink two to three glasses of water. Now, water has this effect where when you consume large quantities of it, it actually can slightly distend the, uh, the stretch receptors inside of your stomach and inside of your large intestine. It can kind of temporarily mimic the idea that you're eating food. And as a result of that, it sends a neurological signal up to your brain that says, okay, slow down. I'm not as hungry anymore. Okay. I'm not going to lie. It's going to be a little bit difficult the first time you do it, maybe the second time, maybe the third time, but it'll eventually get to a point where your brain no longer sends a signal to your digestive system that says it's time for food because you'll develop a pattern where you're not eating breakfast and then that will fade away. So you basically just consume water and not worry about eating food during your breakfast time. Now you get to lunch. At lunchtime, you want to do the same thing. Distract yourself. Go somewhere else. Don't, go, don't show up to a cafe. Don't go to a friend's house for food when everybody else is eating. Distract yourself and take yourself away from a food environment. And when you do that, then you can pass the lunch hour and you can continue to drink water or drink a decaffeinated beverage until you get to dinner time. Now, the goal is to get to approximately 24 hours. If you stop your fast at 5 o'clock p.m. or 6 o'clock p.m. instead of 7 o'clock p.m., it's not a big deal. Just get to a point where you're fasting for approximately 24 hours. And when you do that, you've induced a significant metabolic benefit to multiple tissues like we've already talked about. Now you can take it to the next level and perform the next type of fast. And this is called the twice per week, 24 hour intermittent fast. Here, you're going to choose two days of the week instead of just one. So here I would do Monday and Thursday because they're separated by a couple of days where I can continue to eat food. I'm going to do the same thing and basically skip eating food for 24 hours on Monday I'm going to eat my dinner on Sunday night and I'm going to eat my dinner on Monday. And then I'm going to repeat that process on Thursday. And when I do it that way, I now have two periods of 24 hour intermittent fasting under my belt, which is going to induce a larger negative calorie balance. The third option is for people who have performed intermittent fasting for a significant period of time and are more comfortable with it. This is the, the most effective type of fast that I've ever seen. It's called the 16-8 intermittent fast. And this is actually, funny enough, easier than a 24-hour intermittent fast, and it's also more effective. So here's how you do it. You choose one meal of the day that you're not going to eat. Breakfast is usually the easiest meal to not eat. So again, if we go backwards and start on the Sunday evening, I want you to eat dinner on Sunday evening. I want you to start your fast as soon as dinner is over. I want you to fast all the way through breakfast the next morning, wake up, drink some water, continue moving along through your day, and then basically start eating food at approximately 12 o'clock the next day. If you do it that way, you effectively skip one meal, which is breakfast, and then you are allowed to eat your lunch. You are allowed to eat a snack. You are allowed to eat a dinner, and then you do it over again. The trick with a 16-8 fast and the reason why it is so effective is because you do it every day. This, the original 24-hour fast that I spoke about, the once per week and the twice per week, they're only done once or twice per week. The 16-8 fast is performed every single day. And the accumulated negative calorie balance that you accumulate today and tomorrow and the next day and the next day and the next day is what creates such a powerful metabolic effect over the course of time. At first, it's going to suck. And then it's going to feel automatic. And at that point, you're not going to have to think about it. You're just not even going to be hungry at breakfast. And that's easy for you. You continue doing this process every single day. And eventually you get to the point where you are a professional intermittent faster. This video was just a snippet of a much more in-depth discussion. Click on the link on the screen to check out the full length episode. Now, the science behind health is overly complicated, unfortunately, but getting healthy doesn't have to be. Visit masteringdiabetes.org slash start. Answer some questions about yourself and schedule a free consultation to talk with somebody on our team who's going to show you exactly how we've transformed the lives of thousands of people using the Mastering Diabetes Method. We have a limited number of spots available and that's why it's imperative to find a good fit. Again, visit masteringdiabetes.org slash start to schedule a free zero commitment discovery call and start taking control of your health today.